I am here with Dr. Anthony J. He just gave a talk called Gender Bender Chemicals, right? Mm -hmm. All right. Dr. J, before I ask you my first question, I just want to tell everybody, when I was an environmental reporter for the NBC affiliate in Seattle, we were doing a story about how male salmon were producing egg yolk protein, which is very concerning for researchers, not just for the salmon themselves, but we have these special killer whales that eat the salmon that don't have enough food because there's not enough salmon because they're not reproducing. Stephen Colbert did this funny skit about how these same scientists did a report on what they were finding in the brains of salmon and it was like cocaine and oxy. And so everybody thought that was, that was bad, obviously, but then Stephen Colbert did this funny skit about Sammy the Salmon. He's got red bloodshot eyes. He's on cocaine. He's on a bender. And when I, when I interviewed the scientists, they were like, yeah, that's not great. But what we're the most concerned about are these estrogenic compounds in the water that are basically turning male fish into female fish. And I was like, oh, but, but that wasn't sexy enough necessarily for the media. So that wasn't getting the attention. But I talked about it because I knew myself that I was trying to transition from the same things that were going through our wastewater treatment plants, our detergents, stuff that we don't talk about a lot, our soaps, cosmetics, and they're just washing off of our skin or in from our washing machine. And we're touching all this stuff every day. We tend to think about these big things, but these little things we do every day make a big difference. So that's what Dr. J specializes in. So let's talk about this. What, what's the first misconception that you think people have about this particular topic? Well, people think that plastics aren't toxic because the government says plastics aren't toxic. And the, there's a huge difference between toxicity and something that disrupts your hormones. So... The problem is it doesn't kill cells, right? If you put a bunch of these plastic chemicals like phthalates and BPA and BPS and all this on, on cells that are growing in a dish, they don't look poisonous. They don't look toxic because they disrupt hormones. They definitely have a huge impact on our biology, but they don't necessarily look toxic. So that's the first problem, right? And then the second problem is, is a lot of it's bioaccumulation, so they build up in your body, so it takes longer to see the effects. And then number third, it just takes longer to see the effects, right? So mm -hmm. there's a lot of issues that make it less recognized, but it's definitely become recognized now. And the problem is we still have all the plastics in our environment. We still have the sunscreens with the chemicals and the personal care products with all these chemicals. They're still everywhere. But, you know, you can, you can eliminate them now. People are more aware. They are becoming phthalate-free and BPA-free and... You know, there's good products on the market. There's, you filter your drinking water, start there, right? Is it, is it easier for the industry to say, it's not us that's causing these problems because it could just be anything. It's in all these products. Like, in other words, is the, the widespread use of this stuff, does it make it harder then to address it because everyone can go, it's not me, it's that person? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so, yeah. I mean... And it's more expensive to go with alternatives, right? So as long as they're legal and as long as the consumers aren't that well educated on it. And that's one of the reasons they use a lot of complicated chemistry. Like benzophenone is one of the names of one of the chemicals that disrupts people's hormones. But nobody wants to talk about benzophenone. Most people can't pronounce it. 4 methyl benzaldine camphor is another one. Nobody wants to say that. <laughs> so it's hard, to, it's hard to blame the chemistry because the words are so wonky and... BPA is one of the few that people have awareness of, and that's because the, it's BPA. It's super easy to remember. Mm -hmm. but they're all bad. Okay. Do you have a PhD in... Biochemistry. Biochemistry. Okay. Was this what you originally wanted to get into? How did you start looking um, into this stuff? Yeah, I was just looking into testosterone. I used to research cholesterol and sex hormones, and then I just realized that there's all these things that are disrupting sex hormones, and nobody's talking about them. So, you know, I kind of branched into that independently and mostly because I was worried about it for myself and my kids and obviously it's a real serious problem that's not well you know well discussed it's just not out there and what I wanted to do is find all the chemicals that act like estrogen I didn't want to just elim eliminate BPA I wanted to go like what else is doing this phthalates parabens red food coloring whatever right I wanted to figure it all out so that's why I, I wrote a book on it What's the reason that this stuff started being added to all these products? Like, what purpose did it serve? It's just cheaper. I mean, the BPA, I mean, it's plastic, right? So that makes sense. Anytime you want to make something out of plastic, you just use BPA. But the phthalates in the personal care products are a weird one. It's just cheaper. Mm -hmm. They just use it as cheap fillers, and they don't have to put it on the label because 
they can they can just say fragrance and they can lump all kinds of weird chemicals in the term fragrance and not actually list it on the label so it's a problem because it gets hidden mm. what do you think is the role of government to help or hurt the message you're trying to get across or what 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 would in your in your ideal world mm -hmm. what would what would it look like for the government because the EPA, I, I cross paths with EPA quite a bit. The communications people are very nice, but the EPA still says Roundup is safe, mm -hmm. glyphosate is safe. <laughs> so I like, I have a hard time with you know they'll crack down on one person that's like not that bad, and then they let this huge other industry of chemicals. So so just to say like if we just have the government come in, they're going to make it all better. I mean, well they're already involved in some of these industries, and and they it just seems like they give a pass to some of the worst polluters or mm -hmm. the most dangerous companies and the regulations then hit the, the, the smaller companies. I, I don't know. I just don't know what, what you think would, would solve it from a government's perspective. Is it just up yeah. to the consumer to know? Yeah. I mean, I would look at Robert F. Kennedy. He's probably got some good ideas because he really thinks about this stuff but from that perspective. I'm not a government guy. But I think, you know, the least they could do is just stay out of it or, or stop telling people it's okay. That's the least they could do. If they want to go the extra mile to mm -hmm. actually point out how bad it is for people and how these all have combinatory effects, all these estrogen chemicals, it's not just one chemical, there's a bunch of them and they, com they have combinatory effects. That would be even better if they could kind of expose that, but mm -hmm. it's hard. I mean, there's a lot of industry involved and they make money and they have corruption behind the scenes with a lot of this stuff. It's the same as the pharma companies, you know, so it's frustrating. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's just interesting because the the way they pick and choose, and I think it gives people a false sense that the government is paying attention and closely monitoring all this stuff, so if I can buy it, it must be okay. Because if, mm -hmm. if, mm -hmm. if I wasn't supposed to touch this, then I would know. Like, you know, they came out against the spiverdectin. I'm not going to say the word because it's going to be on YouTube. You know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. The eye mm -hmm. drug and saying mm -hmm. it's like a horse medicine. Mm -hmm. So when we hear them do messaging, negative mes messaging like that about something, we think, okay, like if those are not paying attention necessarily, just going along trying to get our day done, we think, oh, okay, the government is telling us what's bad because they told us about spiverdectin being bad, mm -hmm. which... Anyway, mm -hmm. I'm not going to go, you know, what their point of the horse medicine was. But but, um, but, but then we have this false sense that if we don't hear them saying something negative, it must mm -hmm. be okay. So mm -hmm. I, I think it's just, even it's a subtle thing, we just, we just, just I, I went along for a long time as a reporter thinking that the government was like <laughs> on it, you know, and mm -hmm. there is a, like, so, you know, I didn't, if they told me something in a press release was okay or told me a doctor was doing something bad, I just assumed they were giving me the objective truth. I didn't realize how much spin there is. Mm -hmm in communications departments, you know, that we're basically funding as taxpayers, but yeah, that's not. Mm -hmm. All right, what's the yeah. one thing a consumer should do to, to begin the journey that you talked about today? Uh, filter your drinking water and watch out for fragrances and personal care products. How, cheap fragrances. how to filter your... Activated charcoal. Make sure to use activated charcoal or carbon filters. Uh, that's it. It doesn't have to be super complicated. Just don't store it in plastics after you filter it. Okay, and then the second thing was... Personal care products. Uh, don't get just cheap generic fragrances and personal care products. They're almost always full of petroleum chemicals that act like estrogen in your body. So it's, it's a problem. Hmm. Did you talk about, because I was doing my live stream, did you talk about how this presents in, in a person who might say, oh, I have symptoms of being affected by this stuff? Like, did you go into that at all? You know, how, how, I think so. no? Okay, well then one last question. I've always been curious. I never come around compounds that have a testosteronic effect. They always hear estrogen. Yeah. Why, why are these compounds, you know, why do they have an estrogenic effect? Why, mm -hmm. what, what's up with that? Because the estrogen receptor, the thing that picks up the estrogen is called promiscuous. It's a promiscuous receptor that so binds a lot of different things, whereas the testosterone receptor is very specific. So it doesn't just bind random things. Okay. So estrogens are just more vulnerable to manipulation by fake chemicals. Okay. That's what it comes down to. All right, ladies, you know it's true, <laughs> right? Thank you so much, Dr. Thanks. Day. really appreciate yeah. it. Before I get my quick take on the estrogenic stuff, I want to just say thanks again to Green Pasture for paying for my hotel out here and inviting me to this conference. It's been super exciting. So check out the link in the description of the video or the pinned comment for Green Pasture or just go to greenpasture.org. 
my affiliate link is the way that you can support my work and also buy the product. But just go check them out and see if you like them at greenpasture.org. Great company and a product I've been taking for a long time is the high vitamin D butter oil, cod liver oil blend. I credit it with uh, helping me stay cavity free for a long time. Secondly, don't forget to go to allisonwinepromo.com as usual. The best wines out there. Extremist altitude wines. Be an extremist. Don't go to federal prison. Check out allisonwinepromo.com. Get your high altitude wines from Argentina. 50% off the wine itself. 50% off shipping. These are small family farms. Some of them are hand-picked grapes. One is the oldest vineyard in Argentina, over 200 years old. They use, um, some of them are like natural fermentation, no filtration, and uh, like everything that we've learned about food at this conference so far is happening to the wine industry. So these are great wines for a lot of reasons, and it's a great way to support my work. Okay, so so about the estrogenic stuff, it's funny because when I did, when I did a video talking about that story with the male salmon becoming you know, female, not really becoming female, but they're producing egg yolk protein. And so that had scientists questioning what's happening to the reproduction of salmon, the reproductive capacity of salmon, and how is that affecting their numbers? I had a lot of people mention like, Alex Jones was right, the frogs are gay. And anyway, it's funny because people laugh about that, but there, there really is a serious problem. And, and people think about what goes through wastewater they just think it's like people dumping their pills down the toilet or something. But it's, it's again, it's like these everyday, these everyday products that we're touching that just wash off our skin. And they're not treated in wastewater treatment. They're going straight into our waterways. And, you know, it's, it's so interesting to me, like this, this divide over climate change which was something I never questioned when I was an environmental reporter in TV news, really, I didn't. But I wonder now sometimes if the focus on that is intentional because, because it divides people over, I care about the environment or I don't care about the environment. In other words, if you don't totally buy into or at all buy into uh, the, the fear of climate change, then you just don't care about the environment. And some people go, they kind of like walk away thinking that 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 is what it means to care about the environment is to like have a take on climate change. And that's the only thing the media like ever discusses. And so it keeps our focus on this highly divisive, highly polarized, highly politicized topic when there are so many problems with our natural resources that deserve immediate attention. And this is one of them. This is, this is a real problem. Plasticizers, phthalates, petroleum products, it's not just a problem for our health, it's a real problem for our wildlife. And we just keep beating the drum of climate change. And to me, I mean, I'm not trying to say there's like a Wizard of Oz out there that's pulling the string specifically though, maybe there is. I'm just saying somehow it just seems like however, it, however intentionally orchestrated it is, that this particular issue to me is a top five. And climate change, like, I think the, the amount of drum beating it gets, is it intentionally to distract from issues like this? Because this deserves a lot of attention. And maybe it doesn't because pharmaceutical companies, for instance, which are involved in a lot of this, uh, or cosmetics, um, you know, these, these companies, Johnson and Johnson or whatever, they, they're, they're big players in the, in, you know, in, in the, the estrogenic problem. So do they, do they have some role in all of this? I don't know. I mean, big oil is involved in the whole climate change thing. They'll tell you, you know, we're responsible or whatever now. So they, they, they play into all of the political stuff now. I don't know. I, I just think whenever I, whenever I consider this topic of the, the estrogenic, the estrogenic toxins, I, I just, it just really brings me back to how much, how much we have been, we have been, um, manipulated, brainwashed, whether, like I said, it's intentional or intentional. We have, we have been, we have definitely been trained to think of environment as climate change. You care about the environment, you care about climate change. You don't care about climate change, you don't care about the environment. And then so people who 
might otherwise actually be interested in all these other topics, they just kind of tune out when you say you care about the environment because they, they think what you're saying is you drive a Prius and I drive a diesel truck, but I do care a lot about the environment. And this is one of the topics that I care the most about, that, that I, I would like to get the word out the most about. And, and it's very simple. That's the other thing. It's like you don't need anyone to change this for you. You could just go buy new soap and new detergent and look at what's in your food, preservatives, pr your perfume. This is all stuff you can do tomorrow. You don't need the government to do for you. You don't need a, a pharmaceutical company to do for you. You don't need your doctor to do for you. You don't need it. You can do it. So it's like, maybe that's what scares them, is that we can all do it, and we can do it now. <laughs> we don't need anybody to do it for us. Anyway, what do you think? Uh, leave me a comment. I'd love to hear from you. See you in the next video.